Christians have to follow the kosher laws of the Old Testament. The dietary rules of the law of Moses have been done away in Jesus Christ. They were part and parcel of the Old Covenant. In light of this, Paul writes in Colossians 2, 14 through 16, that Christians are not under these kinds of dietary restrictions, since they foreshadowed, in one way or another, the Lord Jesus Christ. What we eat or do not eat under the new covenant is not an issue, nor does it produce a better standing with the Lord, since one is justified by faith in Jesus Christ alone and not by the works of the law, like following kosher, which was a work of the law. Paul says here in 1 Corinthians 8.8, 8, But food does not commend us to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, nor if we do not eat are we the worse. Impurity, then, is not what you eat or don't eat. It's what is inside of the heart and spirit of a person. This is what Jesus clearly taught in Mark chapter 7 verses 14 through 23. The whole idea of imposing a dietary regulation for the New Testament believer is not scriptural. Those laws are not mandatory for the church since we are under the better and permanent promises of the New Covenant, 2 Corinthians 3, 7 through 18. Paul states uh, in Romans 14, 7, the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The dietary laws that make up biblical kosher are found in Leviticus 11. Pork, shellfish, scavenger animals, birds, rodents, and most insects. God gave the dietary laws of Leviticus 11 to Israel alone to separate them from uh, the Gentiles and the pagan nations surrounding them. Jesus the Messiah, though, declared all foods clean in Mark 7, 19. He also mentions that purity and impurity are a matter of what is on the inside of a person and not on what kind of food he puts into his mouth. It's what comes out of his sinful heart. And Jesus uh, was answering a question the Pharisees had posed to him. The, his disciples were eating food uh, and they did not wash their hands beforehand. But then Jesus takes that and extends it out to the issue of clean and unclean foods to, to say that now the matter of being clean or unclean is an internal issue. Now, there's nothing wrong if a Christian, whether Jew or Gentile, wants to obey the kosher laws, so long as that person does not impose it on other believers as necessary for salvation or sanctification. Romans 14, 1 through 23 does teach that if a weaker believer is offended by our eating non-kosher food, the more mature believer should abstain from eating so as not to offend the weaker conscience of a fellow believer. So we know from scripture that the New Testament believer is under the new covenant where there are no dietary laws. All food is now consecrated by the power of God's word and prayer, even as 1 Timothy 4, 4 through 5 teaches. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer.